was Ezra? We don't know much about him personally. We do know he had a huge role in documenting all that happened to the people of the Lord during their time of exile in Babylon and when they returned to Jerusalem after the exile ended. We know the books of Ezra and Nehemiah are best used together if you want a full account of the hardship and the great achievements that the people of God went through during their captivity in Babylon and when they returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the barren city that had become filled with wild animals. We can fairly accurately state the books were written sometime between 460 BC and 440 BC, but I won't go too far into the depth of the years because it's just too confusing. What we do know we use by the scholars who study the kings of other countries to document the Bible narrative. Those other countries often use titles for their monarchs and kings interchangeably, so there's a lot of study involved. And I don't have the ability to comprehend it all. Even scholars that study Ezra and Nehemiah all their life argue on actual years. The importance of this Bible study is that we know that Ezra and Nehemiah were two men who were encouragers to the people of the Lord to keep trusting in Him, Almighty God, and that if they did, He would provide for His own if they were faithful. And that's the basis of this Bible study. There are those people who insist that Ezra wrote both the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Others state, nope, Nehemiah wrote his own story. I think it might be a combo, and I'll tell you why. Ezra was a scribe first and foremost. Nehemiah was a cupbearer who had heavy access to the king, and he took the burden to rebuild the city when God commanded it through Cyrus. Both men lived in the same time period, give or take a few years, and while it's not documented that they talked to each other directly in Bible literature, we can pretty much assume that they knew each other. So we're going to leave the actual worry about dates to somebody with a whole lot better understanding than me. And again, stay with the study that this is about encouragement, how Ezra and Nehemiah encouraged, and how today in 2024 we are to do the same for those around us. We know that Ezra was instrumental in educating the people about God's laws and bringing them back into his fellowship with those important laws in place. We know the people were full of moral and spiritual darkness during their time in Babylon, and Ezra had his work cut out for him. We know that the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, while detailing the work that was needed to help rebuild the city, also was filled with encouraging the people to rebuild their own hearts back to the Lord, so that they were not also empty and filled with nothing more than mindset like wild animals. Ezra read the law of God publicly, and then he called on the people to repent as one community, one heart. This mindset amongst God's people in 2024 all over the world could change the world as we know it if we all stayed focused on what God has told us to do and not try to change his laws and squeeze his parameters, not to add or detract from his word. If we did those things and simply taught the good news, the gospel of Christ, I think we'd reach the lost a whole lot quicker. Sadly, as a whole, the Christian body has become distracted with who teaches what and what cruise is the next evangelist running and who's singing in it. What position do I have in the church and how can I swing things my way at the next board meeting? And finally, who is or is not going to be in leadership and authority politically if the church is involved? We do all that we can in this earth to share the gospel. That's the one goal Christ gave the disciples and to us through them. God's word never changes. God is forever in control. And if we kept that knowledge in the forefront of everything we do and listen to God's word and follow the leading of the Holy Ghost and give all honor and glory to our Savior Jesus Christ, we will be in good standing in the kingdom of heaven. That is our goal for this Bible study. So let's begin with Ezra, chapter 1. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm, and also to put it in writing. 
that's a start. We have to check out Jeremiah to see what Jeremiah wrote before we go on with Ezra. You see, that's the beauty of God's word. It's like this lovely woven tapestry. One part is no more important than the other, and all work together so that when the tapestry is turned to the right side, all the interweaving in the back is invisible, and only lo God's lovely plan on the front side of the tapestry is in view. Jeremiah chapter 25. This is the message that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah. This message came in the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah. The fourth year of his time as king was the first year that Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. This is the message Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and all the people of Jerusalem. All right, so this was about, oh, I don't know, about a hundred years before Ezra, and it was written around the year 605 BC, and how the scholars figure that is, at this time was the same time that the Egyptians were being overwhelmed by their enemies in modern day Turkey, which is near Syria's border. And they also used the time that the Babylonian armies chased the Egyptians south. They used that time frame. So Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem, but he had to leave because his father had died, and it was his first year of reign in Babylon. Bible scholars believe this prophecy that Jeremiah gave was given between those major events concerning Babylon and Egypt's history that I just told you about. We know that Jeremiah died approximately in 570 BC. We know he had a scribe named Baruch ben Neriah, and he may actually have finished the book of Jeremiah for him because of Jeremiah's approximate time of death. We know Baruch was an older man when he taught Ezra. We know, as we said, Ezra was born in captivity in Babylon, as was Nehemiah. And we know that it is determined Daniel was about 13 to 16 years old when he was taken as a slave, along with the rest of the children of Israel that were captured by Nebuchadnezzar. We know he survived the conquest of Babylon by Cyrus because it speaks of Daniel. But it's impossible to know how long Daniel lived after Cyrus, the king that's ordering the wall to be rebuilt. It's impossible to know how long he lived after that. So we're guessing if he lived a normal age life, he would have died somewhere between 535 and 530 BC. Daniel never mentions in his book that he returned to Jerusalem, and Daniel was a prolific writer. Since he didn't mention it, we can safely assume he was never able to return to his homeland of Jerusalem. Well, why did I tell you all that? Why does it matter what the time span is from the time Jeremiah began to prophesy and to the time they were taken hostage by Nebuchadnezzar until Cyrus the Great finally released them? Because it was well over a hundred years. And it shows us simply and wonderfully that God never forgets his own. When we are one of God's children, born again through the blood of Jesus, we become his own. And he's got a plan. And it may seem like it's never going to end. But if we trust and obey God and we stay in that wonderful plan that he has created for us, we are obedient and submissive. Our tapestries will be beautiful and they will be forever, as will our eternity with our Father, our Savior, and our Comforter be forever. I leave you with this blessing and encouragement today. Never lose heart, never turn back, and never give up encouraging others in the Lord Jesus the Christ.